Tombstone. The crust bakes up right in your oven for a fresh baked, one of a kind tombstone taste. What do you want on your tombstone oven rising pizza? Towel? No. Next, Rosie, from the new movie Fools Rush In, it's the sexy Salma Hayek. And check out the hot new artist, Duncan Sheik. He's performing live next time. I'm Russ Spencer, and this is Fox 5 Eyewitness News Prime Time. Tonight on Fox 5 Eyewitness News Prime Time. If you ever had a need for hidden cameras or audio surveillance devices, this was the place for you. But tonight, U.S. Customs agents are the only people visiting the spy factory after agents tapped into an illegal operation. What we are trying to do and think we have done and, and think this, these pleas today and particularly the terms of them really is you know, sending the message out to the industry uh, as well as the purchasers and users that this is illegal and that law enforcement is not only on to this but really very aggressively pursuing it uh, and it's continuing. We'll show you how the spy factory got caught with an illegal bug. You want to get rid of your car, so you find someone who's willing to take it off your hands. End of story, right? Well, not for the folks who spoke to our IT. team. And they called me and said, we can sell your car for you. And that sounded pretty good. Oh, that sounded great. Do you have any idea where your car is? I don't have a clue. Now they've lost their cars and their credit, accusing one company of a bad wheel deal. got more pep in his step than many students a quarter of his age. When Tom Wigglesworth takes his seat at the University of Georgia, he's at the front of the class. I wouldn't learn things. If I thought I was capable of it, I'd like to go on and get a, a master's degree. Now, Tom is getting ready to graduate. And as it turns out, fellow students are learning a lot from this senior senior. Dedicated, determined, dependable. For Monday, March 10th, 1997, this is Fox 5 Eyewitness News Prime Time. Now, Fox 5 News anchor, Russ Spencer. Good evening. Amanda Davis has the night off. We begin tonight with a story of international intrigue, a spying business that is now out of business. Federal authorities are padlocking all 11 of the spy factory stores. That after the owner pleaded guilty to smuggling and selling illegal devices from around the world. The store's owner, himself a former drug agent, pleaded guilty to 69 counts of money laundering and selling illegal wiretapping devices. Fox 5's Tom Corvin is live from, the Buck from Buckhead, where the spy factory is no longer in business tonight. Tom? Oh, Russ, the spy factory did specialize in spying, and that can be done legally. It can also be done legally, illegally rather, if you sell high-tech eavesdropping equipment that is not approved by the government. That is what they are accused of doing. That is what the owners have agreed to, why the owners have agreed to shut this store down, as well as a dozen others, sending a chill through a vastly going industry. I'm a special agent with U.S. Customs. And that's all the spy factory had to hear. Customs agents seizing cash, slapping their seizure sticker on the Roswell Road door. Interesting. Customers found a lot of interesting things here, and the chain's 18 other stores. Phone voice changers, spy glasses, a place to shop for your husband and his girlfriend. Well, naturally, I'm surprised of this store. I thought it was more novelty more than anything else. Uh, but there's one illegal novelty that's shutting down the Texas-based chain. A chain that once bragged it could eavesdrop from 100 yards away. And that's a sale of the TK-400 radio frequency transmitter. This is illegal and that law enforcement is not only on to this, but really very aggressively pursuing it. Uh, and it's continuing. The sales were made two years ago during a federal sting. The closure part of a plea the owners are making to reduce their sentence. The, these will only detect a transmitter normally from three to six feet away. George Campbell deals with bug detectors, one of the many Dick Tracy dealers in a growing spy industry. Like down the bottom shelf, shelf wiretap the detectors that would detect telephone wiretaps. So, you know, we deal on the disguise camera like the clock cameras. The lens on that camera is only one thirty-second of an inch. But devices that record transmission without FCC approval are what he steers clear of. It's what tripped up the spy factory, and George doesn't want that. They transmit on radio frequencies, and you can pick up the conversation from a re remote location with a receiver. They would plant these devices in places uh, to get information. And we just bluntly, bluntly say, well, I'm sorry, we can't help you because we don't deal in this type of things, because they're illegal. 
In spite of seizures like this, Campbell says illegal devices can still be bought on the black market. Stores like the Spy Factory, however, will help spying no more. Now, this sticker will remain on the door through tomorrow. That is when U.S. Customs agents will come in, finish itemizing the inventory, and then haul all of this out. The three owners of this uh, store and the chain, the 11 other stores, still face 15 years in prison as well as numerous fines. And according to the U.S. Justice Department, more arrests could follow. Reporting live, Tom Corbin, Fox 5. Eyewitness News. So, Tom, what happens to all the stuff there? Will it be destroyed? Do you know? This will now become uh, government property. Tom Corvin, thanks very much. Now, almost two years ago, federal agents raided the spy factory store in Buckhead and others around the nation. In April of 95, agents confiscated phony ballpoint pens, illegal phone jack transmitters, and other high-tech surveillance equipment from overseas. Nationwide, 13 people were arrested and charged with possession of illegal surveillance devices. Nobody in the Buckhead store was arrested. In September of 95, the owner of the store and another executive were indicted, charged with smuggling a million and a half dollars worth of Japanese bugging devices. Police are hoping a photograph taken by an ATM camera will help them find a man who robbed a Sandy Springs woman. Officers say the man burglarized the woman's home, stealing a $15,000 tennis bracelet. They say he then stuffed the woman in the trunk of her car, took her to an automatic teller machine, and forced her to withdraw $500. It happened last Sunday. If you think you know the man in the picture, Fulton County Police want to talk to you. Homicide detectives are still searching for the gunman who shot and killed the owner of an Atlanta flea market. Police say the gunman wore a hooded sweatshirt and ski mask as he tried to rob the SNA market on DeKalb Avenue. Officers say the man fired two shots at close range into the owner's chest. Andrew Lowe Ran died a short time later at Grady Hospital. Police believe the gunman fled on foot and may still be in this area. The management company that handled the Olympic vendor program was cleared of some alleged wrongdoing. In a case against BG Swing Management Company, the state Supreme Court ruled in its favor today. Two vendors accused BG Swing of forcing them to give up their regular street vending sites in downtown Atlanta for alternate sites during the Olympic Games. The company is also facing more lawsuits from other street vendors. During the summer, the vendors complained of poor sales and conditions of their locations. When a company closes its doors, it usually means customers are left out in the cold. Well, in this case, the customers are out in the cold without their cars. Tonight, the I-Team follows up on the company they exposed several months ago, and consumer reporter Virginia Ellis is here now to tell us what's happened since the company shut its doors. Virginia? Well, Russ, when Progressive Financial Services offered to sell a customer's car for them, it sounded like a good deal. Progressive would find a buyer, and until they did, they would make the payments for you. Only problem? The payments weren't being made, and now that the company is closed, the customers don't know where their cars are either. I can't believe that this company's done this to us. Dawn Strong just wanted to get rid of one of her cars, and when Progressive Financial Services offered to sell it for her and promised to make all payments until it was sold... And that sounded pretty good. Oh, that sounded great. And it worked for a while. The December payment wasn't made until January 3rd, and that's when we started saying, okay, what's going on? Where's the payment? And that's when we learned that they were gone. You have our word payments are being made, so that's our word against theirs, right? Progressive closed its doors after our I-Team report in December, and the Governor's Office of Consumer Affairs slapped Progressive with a $120,000 penalty. Here's what the state says Progressive was doing wrong. When someone used Progressive to sell their car, they literally turned the keys over to Progressive. The company promised their cars would be sold and their loans would be taken out of their names. But that wasn't always happening. Dawn Strong thought her car was sold. Someone else was driving her car, but she found out the loan was still in her name. Now with Progressive closed, owners like Dawn don't know how they will find their cars. Do you have any idea where your car is? I don't have a clue. Do you know where your car is? No. Rhonda Deloach, Melvin Green, and Devin Duty say they too were misled by Progressive Financial Services. Rhonda and Melvin thought their cars were sold. Now they don't have their cars, but they do have late car payments. They say Progressive put other people in their cars, but never paid off their loans. I uh, contacted Progressive and they assured me that it was just a mix up and some checks and so forth and so on, and that the payments would be taken care of and don't worry about it. And they were not. They're just taking people and just ruining their credit. Even more troubling, Rhonda DeLoach says the people who bought her car claim they made the payments to Progressive and they even have the receipts to back it up. But the payments never made it to the finance company. Now the state's investigating to find out what Progressive did with the money. 
How old is this car? Mm, maybe two and a half years. Devin Duty now has a black mark on his credit rating, and he blames Progressive. He did get his car back before the company closed up shop, but it wasn't the car he turned over a few months earlier. He says there was a new dent and many more miles on the odometer. So you had about 9,000 additional miles on this car? In three months. Don, Rhonda, Melvin, and Devin all had problems selling their cars through Progressive. But it's not just the car sellers who are complaining. The I-Team has also heard from the car buyers, who've ended up losing money and their cars. I went out to go to work, and the car was missing. It was gone. Amy Burden says she made a $500 down payment on a Honda Civic and was paying $318 a month to Progressive when they came and took the car away. And I asked him why did he take the car, and he told me that he didn't want to talk about it. So Amy had to buy another car and wonders what happened to the car she thought she was buying from Progressive. Dawn Strong wonders what happened to her car she thought was sold. I would hope that the person that has my car realizes that this is a scam and I hope that they'll give it back. The state's Office of Consumer Affairs is trying to get the cars back to the original owners. Until then, some of them, like Dawn Strong, have had to borrow money to make late payments on a car that they can't even find. That is just unbelievable that yes. this would happen. How did these poor folks find out about Progressive in the first place? Progressive found them. It was very interesting. All the people we talked to were contacted by Progressive because they had ads in a magazine that you may have seen, The Auto Trader, which is a legitimate magazine to sell your car. But they were contacted and said, uh, we can sell your car for you. And this is where they ended up. Well, suppose Progress had, Progressive had done what it said it was going to do right. and sold the car. Would it still be in trouble with the state at this point? Yes, it would, because they did not notify the original finance company, the one that has the original risk, the one that has the loan. They haven't notified them. They've done this kind of behind their back, and that is a problem. Wow, lots of victims. Yes. Virginia, thanks very much. It's time now for a quick look at the weather from Nancy Loveland, who is sitting in for Ken Cook in the Forecast Center. Nancy? Well, after a spectacular day today, we're going to have a pretty nice evening. We've had a lot of fair skies this evening. Now we're seeing a few more clouds from a frontal boundary that's trying trying to make it to the south, but right now it's actually stationary and we've seen a little bit of rain shower activity drifting from central Alabama into west central uh, Georgia at the moment. Let's look at those radar pictures. You can see not much to talk about, but maybe a few sprinkles of rain in west central Atlanta. Most of that, I think, will probably be in southern Atlanta, it looks like for tonight. And it looks like that front will eventually make it on throughout our area during the day tomorrow. And that means more sunshine in the forecast, but somewhat cooler temperatures. 66 degrees at this hour, but on the other side of the front, about 50 degrees at Nashville. But all of us here in kind of a moderate westerly flow, and that's the way it's been for several days. This is what the upper air pattern looks like right now. A little bit of a ridge back off to the west, a little bit of a trough here in the east. Some cooler weather going throughout the Great Lakes, but we're still well below the northern jet stream and that's why we've been really really warm and it looks like big changes ahead we're going to see a real steep trough begin to dig in by late in the weekend toward the beginning of next week that means much cooler temperatures not necessarily good news with all the uh, flowers and the trees blooming out there russ we're going to detail that forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes back to you Nancy, thanks. We'll see you then. Next on Fox 5 Eyewitness News Prime Time tonight, the Georgia Supreme Court overturns the guilty verdict of a man convicted in the fiery death of his wife. And later on Fox 5 tonight, Atlanta rap artists talk about the death of notorious B.I.G., a live report at about 1020. Then about 1040 tonight, an inspiring story about a 92-year-old college student. I want to learn things. If I thought I was capable of it, I'd like to go on and get it. A master's degree. A closer look still to come. If you want to see more than news, if you want to experience the story, be part of the action. See your world from every angle. Immediate, unpredictable, up close, and real. If you want to see all sides of the news, you've got to see it in 3D. Dedicated, determined, dependable. Fox 5 Eyewitness News. See for yourself.
This is the sound of small businesses doing more business with Fridays free. They're doing more because thanks to Sprint, all their long distance on Fridays is free. While the rest of the week, they're still getting Sprint's low flat rates. Even better, call now and get Fridays free until the year 2000 with no term commitment. Call 1-800-598-5000 for Fridays free. Only from Sprint Business. Hello? Introducing the all-new Jeep Wrangler. Dual airbags, a smoother ride, and starting around 14,000. Oh! Nature! Trees! Boulders! Must be his first Jeep. Rookie. Oh! Wrangler. Only $13,995 at your dealer. We were sitting in the bean field eating prosciutto pizza. The one with the incredible rising crust. Then we saw it, a big old flying saucer. These real nice aliens tried our prosciutto pizza, liked its fresh baked taste. Then they just flew off. OK, we'll be in touch. Frozen pizza that tastes fresh baked? <laughs> New prosciutto pizza. Unbelievable fresh baked taste, really. A great sandwich doesn't have to have all that fat. At Subway, seven of our six-inch subs have six grams of fat or less. Take the Subway Challenge at a Subway near you. The Georgia Supreme Court has overturned the conviction of an Atlanta businessman accused of killing his wife. Weldon Wayne Carr is the owner of Hastings Nursery. Carr is serving a life sentence for the 1993 murder of his wife, Patricia. Well, Fox 5's Melissa Jew is live in Brookhaven tonight with more on what happens now that the verdict has been overturned. Melissa? Russ, Weldon Wayne Carr still owns Hastings Nursery here behind me. The state Supreme Court reversal triggers a whole new set of legal maneuverings, all surrounding the basic question during trial. Was the fire that killed Patricia Carr deliberately set or accidental? Weldon Wayne Carr was a successful Atlanta businessman, the owner of Hastings Nursery, when he went on trial for killing his wife by setting fire to their Sandy Springs home in 1993. Patricia Carr died of smoke inhalation. But the state Supreme Court has reversed his murder conviction, ruling the trial judge allowed prosecutors to introduce inadmissible evidence by allowing evidence of a dog's alert to the alleged presence of a fire accelerant as substantive evidence of the accelerant, and allowing hearsay evidence concerning state statements the deceased made to her sister, best friend, lover, and neighbor. During the trial, prosecutor Nancy Gray's contended car set fire to their home after learning his wife was going to leave him for another man. She disagrees with the court on the dog evidence. Yes, I think the dog evidence is good evidence. It's used in other states. Drug dogs, bomb dogs, cadaver dogs are all accepted in courts of law. I don't understand why they chose not to allow an accelerant dog, a fire dog as we call it. Carr's attorney Jack Martin disagrees. He spoke to our radio partner WGST tonight. When they brought a dog into the house to look for accelerant, the dog made some alerts. They then got the most sophisticated equipment in the country to look at that and there was no evidence whatsoever of an accelerant. Now, the man needs a new trial. The man may well be innocent uh, and I hope he has, you know, he'll have the opportunity to, to go back to court. Now it's up to the Fulton County DA Paul Howard to decide whether to retry this case. We're live in Brookhaven tonight. Melissa Jew, Fox 5 Eyewitness News. Melissa, how soon could Carr be out of jail? Well, the Fulton County DA has to decide whether to retry the case. If that indeed happens, then he'll be transferred to the Fulton County Jail and where he could very likely bond out. How about that? Melissa Jew, thanks very much for the latest. We have more details now on Carr's conviction. In May of 1994, a jury found Carr guilty of malice murder, felony murder, arson, and eavesdropping. The judge sentenced Carr to life in prison on the malice murder charge. Carr would have been eligible for parole in seven to ten years. At the time, Carr told the court the sentence was, in effect, the end of his life. Up next on Fox 5 Eyewitness News primetime tonight, fellow rap artists and fans of Biggie Smalls talk about his senseless murder. And later, a champion with a powerful punch shows he has a big heart to match it. Now, tonight's winning lottery numbers. Fox 5 Eyewitness News continues in a moment.
Here's a special investment opportunity you should take stock in. For a limited time, you can lease a V8-powered Lincoln Town Car for $4.99 a month with just $9.99 down. No luxury car has a smoother ride or ranks higher in customer loyalty than Town Car. Now just $4.99 a month with $9.99 down on a 24-month lease, which not only makes Town Car the ultimate expression of luxury, it makes sound financial sense as well. But the market closes soon, so see your Lincoln dealer today. Okay, people, here's what you get only from Bell South Mobility. Yeah, it's a commercial, but if you can just hold off from the siren song of the snack cake, it'll be worth your while. Because no other wireless service offers you all these things. What things, you inquisitive little tykes ask? How's about using your cell phone nationwide at a single roaming rate, a low statewide rate, and digital technology? You catch all that? It's okay. You'll see more of this than those alien abductions in the supermarket tabloids. Only Bell South Mobility offers you all this and the largest coverage area in the Southeast. Count on it. After conquering Earth for 30 years, it was time to comfort it. Introducing the all-new Mitsubishi Montero Sport. What are you doing? I uh, uh, forgot to shave. A remarkably smooth-riding sport utility vehicle. The Montero Sport. It puts a new face on SUV comfort. Not bad. Hey, you missed a spot. The 1997 Montero Sport and Montero from Mitsubishi. Built for living. H&R Block works to get you every penny you have coming. And those pennies can really add up. Someone to watch over me. Mystery at the 4077, tonight on Fox 5. Police in Los Angeles say witnesses in the death of rapper Notorious B.I.G. are afraid to talk. At a news conference tonight, Los Angeles detectives say they are investigating the possibility that the rapper's death is related to other rap artist murders, including that of Tupac Shakur. Obviously cannot eliminate the fact that there's been a number of murders involving uh, rap, uh, singing, uh, rap singers. Uh, yes, we have to look at those, and yes, we think there may be a possibility, so therefore we're going to talk to the other detectives in the other cities. Industry insiders say there was a rivalry between Tupac's death row record company and Biggie Small's Bad Boy Entertainment. The death of rapper Notorious B.I.G., otherwise known as Biggie Smalls, is causing quite a stir among his fans and fellow rappers. He was killed yesterday in a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles, and phone lines were ringing all day today at a local rap station. As Fox 5's Sharon Crowley tells us now, rap fans are calling for an end to the violence. Sharon? Russ, we're here at Tower Records in Buckhead, where the story is the same all over the city. Fans are buying out Notorious B.I.G. or big CDs as much as they can get them. In fact, another one is expected out later this month, but there is only one of his CDs left here. Obviously, his murder has left a big impression on his fans. Notorious B.I.G. situation. What's going on? They're playing his song. And counseling his listeners. If you're feeling frustrated, you just can't get any answers in that. Hit us up. We're here uh, to help you out. Most who can't believe another mega rap star is gone. Um, a lot of people are hurt by it. A lot of people are frustrated. Some people think it was a setup. The notorious Big, as he's known, was shot to death this weekend as he left a Los Angeles party. Born Christopher Wallace, the teenage crack dealer, turned his life around with rap. His story of the streets landed him success. But this weekend, he met the same fate as another rap superstar, Tupac Shakur. It's real disappointing because, you know, I, I looked up to both artists. Genocide when we ride because we pack it chrome. Having dreams of living large, so we sell a blow. Atlanta rappers MC Assault and Starvin Marvin aspire to Notorious Big's success. Like him, they used rap to lift them out of poverty. Even before we got into uh, rap business, uh, uh, we, we live that kind of life, really. It's, it's really rough out where we're from, and um, 
We, I just really basically take one day at a time. Oh, it's about a half past midnight. High beam zone because they done shot out the street lights. Like many in this community, they're sad to see another promising career ended because of violence. We need to come out and build the highest communication and stop killing one another. Yeah. It ain't getting us nowhere in the world. You're absolutely right. I can. Well, you're looking at the empty slot there. Notorious Big B.I.G. or Biggie Smaltz, as he's known, has another album still coming out later this month. Eerily, it is called Life After Death, and he will certainly be missed by many fans here in Atlanta. In Buckhead, Sharon Crowley, Fox 5 Eyewitness News, Prime Time. Sharon, you say the fans are calling for an end to violence, and yet they're buying these albums with lyrics that, in, in a sense, celebrate violence. Do they see the irony in that? They see it sort of as a tribute to him. They feel that his music and Tupac Shakur's music, they were speaking about an experience that they knew. They don't see it as something that caused their deaths. Fair enough. Sharon Crowley, thanks very much. The future of Los Angeles Police Chief Willie Williams is in doubt tonight. Today, members of a civilian police commission set up in the wake of the Los Angeles riots said they are not renewing Williams' contract. The members say Williams has failed to become an effective leader of the 12,000-member force. But Williams is defending his record. I've always felt and believed that over the last four and a half years, I provided not just leadership, but effective leadership to the men and women inside this organization and to the men and women of the city of Los Angeles. Williams is the city's first black police chief and is the first chief not chosen from within the ranks of the Los Angeles Police Department. The Los Angeles City Council could override the commission's decision, but tonight there is no indication that Williams will mount an effort to try to make that happen. Later on Fox 5, new reports say the Clinton administration may have known more about donations from foreign countries than previously stated. And next, meet the state's newest millionaire. She turned two bucks into a fortune. Plus, Nancy Loveland tells us we could be in for some cooler temperatures. That's right, Russ. Although it looks like spring's going to hold on for now with warmth and sunshine, but there are some changes ahead. I'll have you complete extended forecast coming up next. Stay with us. When you risk everything... I will not have the first losing season in 40 years. ...just to win... You get those guys, you are in the final four. It's not a game anymore. Let's get these guys. Gonna be on top again. Program's clean. He bought him, Charlie. I know he bought him. I know everything. Did you cheat? Nick Nolte, Shaquille O'Neal, Penny Hardaway. Did you take money? No! Blue Chips, broadcast premiere Tuesday at 8, 7 central on Fox. This morning, strange things are happening all over the world. Shops are about to open empty. Part suppliers are partless, and assembly workers have nothing to assemble. Is this any way to run a business? With FedEx it is. Every morning the world gets just what it wants, just when it needs it, without expensive warehousing. Gone today, here again tomorrow. Now that's the way the world works. A woman is feeling a little sluggish, so she goes to her personal trainer and she says, hey, I'm feeling a little sluggish, what do I do? Get a Katera, said the trainer. So they take a test drive and she puts it through a workout. Climbs a few hills, passes a truck, and stops on a mime. The more she drives it, the more she likes it. The more she likes it, the better she feels. Katera does my heart good, said the woman. I think I'll buy one. Exercise your prerogative, said the trainer. Katera, it's the caddy that zigs. The horses really don't like me. They think, oh, well, there's that darn truck. It's time to go to the barn. I don't want to be ridden today. That's not my fault. I don't ride them. I just take them where they need to go. They blame me. Can you believe? But luckily, my owner, he takes care of me. He knows my engine's made for a high-octane gas like Chevron Supreme with Tecron. And that Tecron, it helps keep my emissions low. No premium outperforms Chevron Supreme with Tecron. Chevron, simply smarter. My emissions are fine. The horse's emissions, uh, they're questionable. When I need to stop heartburn, I want to block the acid that can cause it, fast. So which blocks acid faster? New Tagamet HP200. It has more acid blockers than Pepsi AC. So Tagamet works faster to block stomach acid. It doesn't mean it's stronger, it's just faster. And Tagamet's label says it prevents heartburn in half the time of Pepsi AC. And it lasts for hours. New Tagamet HB200. More acid blockers help block acid faster. Now, Fox 5 Eyewitness Weather. 
Nancy Loveland's back, and I have to tell you, I have so many beautiful blooms in my yard now and in my neighborhood. I'm hoping we're not going to get a freeze at some point. I'm hoping, way. too. I really think that we're going to see some cooler temperatures probably by the beginning of next week. Um, if we can get it one more week beyond that, we're probably okay, but I'm going to be crossing my fingers and hoping that this air mass will modify somewhat because we are going to see some changes ahead. A deep trough here in the east will mean much cooler temperatures than what we've seen for the last, boy, what has it been, about two weeks lately. Let's go ahead and look outside. It's a pretty nice evening. We've had a lot of sunshine today and even a beautiful sunset this evening. At the moment, we're calling it cloudy right above Peachtree City, 66 degrees, dew point around 58 degrees, so a good deal of moisture still in the area. 75% relative humidity with a west wind at 7 miles an hour and a steady barometer. But you know what? That's 76 degrees. Felt pretty good today, didn't it? I was out in the garden until I had to come to work. 62 was our mild overnight low last night, and that gives us an uh, average temperature of about 17 degrees above average for this time of year. 6.53 is your sunrise, and I think it'll be fairly bright tomorrow morning, and about 6.43 is your sunset. Thanks for that beautiful shot of our city. All right, here in the southeast, still looking at, for the most part, dry weather. We have a frontal boundary. You can pick it up on the satellite picture. Here's the big low beginning to move off into the Canadian Maritimes. It's pulling the colder air and another clipper system in throughout the Great Lakes, and then it kind of stalls out the tail end of it. But I do think as we go on throughout the day tomorrow that rest of that front will move on through. You might see a couple of clouds in the morning, but I think we'll break into a lot of sunshine. High pressure has given the Ohio Valley a great day to dry out with a lot of sunshine and moderate temperatures. And now now we're beginning to see more moisture feed into a storm system that is taking shape back off to the west. Eventually, the moisture and the low will pair up together and head this way. That's going to take a couple days before that breaks down. In the meantime, we'll enjoy some dry conditions. We have some snow right now in throughout the Great Lakes and also some scattered showers and thunderstorms in also in central Alabama, also in western Georgia. We might see a few sprinkles of rain. For the most part, I think we're going to see fair skies as we get toward the morning hours. Most of this moisture will begin to settle to our south, it looks like, in the next 12 to 24 hours. 66 degrees right now in metro Atlanta, 64 in, in excuse me, Athens, 61 up at Rome. So with those dew points as high as they are, I don't think our temperatures are going to cool off all that much, perhaps, into the low, maybe even a few 50s for the overnight low for tonight. So kind of mild temperatures, 40s well off into the mountains for tonight. And the real cool stuff, the 20s and 30s, well off to the northwest, and it will remain there for the next couple of days. Here's our frontal boundary, which I'm really feeling like it's going to make some progress during the overnight hours tonight. I'm keeping my fingers crossed because as soon as we get this out of here, this, this high pressure gets to build it, and that means more sunshine again for tomorrow. A quick moving clipper will continue to move in throughout this area. And that's going to give us a reinforcing shot of somewhat cooler air by Wednesday and also by Thursday. But it's a dry front, so it's not going to really mean much for us. Temperatures tomorrow will be into the low to mid-70s. Your forecast tonight calling for fair skies eventually 50 to 55 degrees. Waking up to temperatures near 50, I think a good deal of sunshine and a lot of sunshine in throughout the afternoon. Very warm temperatures, 70 to 75 degrees with uh, very breezy winds out of the northwest, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's your extended forecast. It does have some changes. Wednesday still looking great. Great 70. Some more clouds on Thursday with a high of about 69 degrees. Looking a little stormy for right now on uh, Friday. Hoping to dry it out for the second half of Saturday. We're hoping for that, but some cooler temperatures certainly will catch up with us by Sunday. Russ, we're going to have a look at your wake-up forecast coming up at about 10.55. Back to you. Nancy, thanks. Life is full of new possibilities tonight for Georgia's newest multimillionaire. Pamela Reynolds bought the winning numbers for last Friday's Georgia Lotto drawing at a Norcross convenience store. At Lotto headquarters today, she claimed the first installment of the $11.6 million Lotto jackpot. Reynolds plans to buy a home for herself and her sister, and her ex-husband can only imagine what might have been. I am single now, been divorced for about a year. <laughs> I sent him a copy in the mail. <laughs> Reynolds is quitting her job as a receptionist and may start her own business. Good for her. Heavyweight boxing champ Evander Holyfield is a winner who wants to give something back to the community. Well, today Holyfield and his wife announced the formation of the Holyfield Foundation. Holyfield has always credited the Atlanta Boys Club with helping him reach his goal of becoming a boxer. And now he wants to help Atlanta children by awarding grants to help them achieve their goals in whatever fields they decide to go into. Me um, going to the Boys Club at eight years old, me being raised in, in a family that didn't have much, I realized that, that no one goes anywhere without an opportunity. 
More than 40 different Atlanta corporations have given money to the Holyfield Foundation to help make it a true community effort. Expect a few traffic problems in the morning. A look at your road watch a little later tonight. And next, a newborn left abandoned in a dumpster is getting her first taste of life in a real home. Details when we come back. February was a banner month. We moved tons of cars, but the factory's still sending more. Nissan has too many cars and too many trucks. Save big on a 97 Nissan XE truck. It comes with air, alloy wheels, and AM FM cassette. With cash back and dealer incentives, you could save up to $2,000. The selection on all Nissan models is tremendous. A 97 Nissan truck with up to $2,000 in savings. But hurry, it all ends April 1st at your local Nissan dealer. A barrier is broken. A wall comes tumbling down. And two worlds come together. The earth meets the sky. The Negro League meets the Major League. Fine art meets pop art. And our world is never quite the same again. Now suppose such a change was about to happen in the world of finance. Suppose someone was about to marry the savvy of a Wall Street broker with the common sense of a Main Street banker, giving more people more access to more financial services than ever before. Supposing it was even possible, this first union between a broker and a banker, whatever would you call it? That's what we thought. Fantasy Five from the Georgia Lottery. You could win hundreds of thousands of dollars all at once. Then you could start living your fantasies today, no matter what they are. At CarMax, we put all our used cars through a 110-point inspection. Because we figure you can never really know what a used car's been through until you've been through it yourself. CarMax, the new way to buy used cars. At 10 days old, she was abandoned in a dumpster, but tonight, baby Alexandra has a new home and a new future. The infant was released from West Pace's medical center today. She is said to be in excellent health. The infant was in critical condition when she was admitted to the hospital on February 27th. The baby was found in a dumpster in Riverdale. Clayton County DFAX has custody of baby Alexandra, and today the agency placed her in the care of a foster family. The girl's mother has been charged with child cruelty. Georgia legislators will get a chance to vote on a bill banning a controversial form of abortion. For weeks, bills barring partial birth abortions were kept in committees. Pro-choice supporters have argued that the bills were so vague they could prohibit other types of abortion. But the Senate's version of the bill was sent to a Republican-controlled committee, which then passed it on to the full Senate. In a highly unusual situation, President Clinton has been publicly contradicted by the FBI. The president says the agency instructed White House officials not to tell him that China might have been trying to buy influence in Congress with laundered money. But the FBI says that's not true. The controversy is the latest development in a series of campaign fundraising controversies. Also tonight, there are new allegations of illegal and improper fundraising by Republicans. Democrats have already returned millions of dollars in improper donations. The Citadel is ready to close the books on a hazing case at that school. The interim president announced a series of punishments today for the cadets involved in the incident. Fifteen men were accused of sexual harassment and hazing. Two female students say they were shoved, kicked, and forced to drink tea until they got sick. One cadet was cleared today. Another was expelled from the school. Ten others are being punished. The remaining students left last year. With these punishments, the Citadel has exhausted its remedies available to it under the college's rules and regulations. Hopefully, this will bring to a conclusion this most dark chapter in our history. Citadel officials are also promising to make the co-ed campus work. 
Here's what's up next on Fox 5 Eyewitness News primetime tonight. Meet a college student who is old enough to be the grandfather of his fellow pupils, perhaps great-grandfather. From the first day, I thought, oh, you know, this should be interesting, you know, having this old man in our class. And, um, but, it, you know, he's turned out to be just like any other student. A closer look next. Robinson Humphrey, a little south of Wall Street. Smith & Wesson. I like this one. He's got the guns. Skip killed Jorge, killed my brother. The gangs. There's this guy looking for me. I'll pay you to watch my back. And the girl. I got her. I want the money. But nothing can stop a man. Where is he? Address, phone numbers, I want it. Out for revenge. Why don't you call the police? I'm my own police. Harvey Keitel, Stephen Dorff, Timothy Hutton, City of Industry, rated R. Starts Friday, March 14th. Oh, Whoa! Lately, I can't get Dairy Queen out of my head. It's got me thinking Sunday every day. Now, when I buy a super value meal for lunch, I get a free Sunday. I can get a double cheeseburger super value meal, including regular fries and a drink. And to top it all off, a free Sunday. That's with any super value meal. DQ's turning lunch into a free-for-all. For hot eats, cool treats, think DQ. Stood there boldly, sweating in the sun. Felt like a million, felt like number one, like a rock. Chevy Astro, the only truck tough enough to handle childhood. You love to indulge in decadence and still look delicious. So Nestle Sweet Success is more luscious than ever and just 200 calories. With Nestle Sweet Success, you can lose it all and have it all at the same time. sound of small businesses doing more business with Fridays free. They're doing more because thanks to Sprint, all their long distance on Fridays is free. While the rest of the week, they're still getting Sprint's low flat rates. Even better, call now and get Fridays free until the year 2000 with no term commitment. Call 1-800-598-5000 for Fridays free. Only from Sprint Business. Fox 5 Eyewitness News continues with tonight's Closer Look. Next week, the University of Georgia will hold its late winter graduation ceremony. It means a new beginning for most students, but for one of them, the college degree will cap an extraordinary story of perseverance and defiance of the biological clock. Fox 5's Doug Richards joins us now with a closer look at one unusual college grad. Doug? Well, Russ, Tom Wigglesworth spent a career working as a civil and electrical engineer, mostly for the U.S. Department of Interior. He retired 27 years ago, but he didn't stop working. Instead, Tom Wigglesworth went back to college. Tom Wigglesworth is a quick-footed retiree who has had more than his fill of puttering around the yard, fixing things up at his rural home in Elberton. Each morning finds Wigglesworth behind the wheel of his car, for his daily commute, a 40-mile drive to Athens, where he wades into the campus of the University of Georgia and climbs aboard the bus that will take him to class. It's a pretty young, energetic crowd you're running with here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Several years younger than I am. In Georgia, tuition at state colleges is free for residents 65 or older. So 12 years ago, Tom Wigglesworth decided to take a class in music. And he kept taking classes, just one or two at a time. This spring, his class is called Introduction to Western Religious Traditions. Okay, today we're going to discuss the Quran. When he completes it, he will have earned his bachelor degree at the age of 92. I didn't realize he is that old. From the first day, I thought, oh, you know, this should be interesting, you know, having this old man in our class. But, it, you know, he's turned out to be just like any other student. No one can produce another Quran. Inimitable? Not to be imitated. Exactly. 
Tom Wigglesworth says his hearing and eyesight are not what they once were. So he typically finds a seat front and center of his classroom. And the message of the Quran also includes legal guidelines for community life. Where he listens, takes notes, reads with the aid of a magnifying glass, and speaks up among students who are younger than the youngest of his 14 grandchildren. It was Isaac. It says Ishmael in their text. Tom Wigglesworth says he started school with no intention of earning his degree. But when each semester began, he kept finding classes to take. Kept going because I enjoyed it. I'd get over to school, start the, starting the term, and I wondered what I'm doing there, and I decided I'm there because I like to be there. Tom Wigglesworth earned his first bachelor degree in 1929 in civil engineering at the University of Nevada. So when he began pursuing his second bachelor degree here at the University of Georgia, he didn't have to start from scratch. The university gave him credit for courses like English, math, physics, biology, courses that he had taken 68 years ago. Come on. And unlike some of his younger classmates, self-discipline comes easily to Wigglesworth. Each day, he's back home in Elberton by midday. And each afternoon, he hits the books. He studies. He comes home, eats lunch, and he studies until dinner at night. He has really devoted himself to it. The daily trips to the University of Georgia campus have become a 12-year routine for this 92-year-old man and a bit of a curiosity to his fellow students, young people in the prime of their lives, observing and learning from a man in the twilight of his. I think it shows a lot of character that he's willing to come back to school or still be in school at this age and trying to learn something new. I'm curious what he wants to do with it, you know, being as old as he is, you know, why why would he want to do it? But I think if that's what he wants to do, it's great. Tom Wigglesworth says he has enjoyed college, but once he gets his degree in a few days, he'll yield to his failing eyesight and advancing age and give it up for good. You're gonna miss school? Yes, if I thought I was capable of it, I'd like to go on and get a, a master's degree. I don't know for sure, but I'll find something to do. <laughs> Tom Wigglesworth has four children, 14 grandchildren, 10 great-grandchildren, and one very proud wife. Next week's graduation ceremony in Athens will be jammed with the descendants of Mr. Wigglesworth, who will all watch him receive his diploma, his bachelor degree in history. What a great story. They're going to have to have a Wigglesworth wing to just accommodate <laughs> everybody who's going to be there. Uh, did you talk to any of the teachers? What's it like for them to have somebody... Uh, that imagine, advanced in age. In uh, imagine being a 24-year-old teacher, which uh, Elizabeth Williams was in that uh, religion class. She says that uh, it was a little intimidating, and I she was uh, reluctant to stray far from her field of expertise because she was afraid that he was going to call her on it. Absolutely. Hey, he says that he's there because obviously he wants to be. That's got to be a lesson for the other students as well, I would think, don't you think? Just... You, know, you know that he's not there for the intangible joys of college <laughs> life. He's there to study. He goes in the morning and he comes home at noon. That's a great story. Congratulations to him. Doug, thanks. Next on Eyewitness News Primetime tonight, a wayward mountain lion finds his way into our Fox 5 featured photo. And in sports tonight, March Madness has begun and two Georgia teams have a date for the big dance. Carla Moore is up next with the details. Now, a look at the day on Wall Street. Fox 5 Eyewitness News continues in a moment. This is the sound of small businesses doing more business with Fridays free. They're doing more because thanks to Sprint, all their long distance on Fridays is free. While the rest of the week, they're still getting Sprint's low flat rates. Even better, call now and get Fridays free until the year 2000 with no term commitment. Call 1-800-598-5000 for Fridays free. Only from Sprint Business. Messy, sticky flea treatments have a nasty way of coming between you and your pet. Which is why, if you care about spending time with your dog, you shouldn't wait until you see fleas, but start them on program now. One safe program tablet once a month now will prevent you both from suffering the pangs of separation later. Program, because nothing should come between you and your pet. Only from your veterinarian. What have we here? Steak and Ale's Nine Pepper Filet. A choice filet 
prepared with a rich brandy peppercorn sauce and lightly seasoned with variety of finely crushed peppers. Nine peppers in all, and you get to taste them all at once. The Nine Pepper Filet, one of our signature tastes, only at Steak and Ale. This is the GMC Sonoma, and so is this, and this. So there's no doubt Sonoma is a great-looking, sporty pickup. And just as there's no end to all the reasons for you to own a new Sonoma, your reason for buying now is customer cash. $1,000 customer cash on any new Sonoma. Or choose 6.9% APR GMAC financing for up to 60 months. You have 1,000 great new reasons to buy a new Sonoma now. See your local GMC dealer today. They say, for some guys, it comes natural that they were born to play the game. Might be true, might not. All I know is I gotta stay a step ahead. So I get out and practice, 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 and practice. Cause come game time, I can't be second guessing myself or my gear. That's why I'm always looking for that edge and why I only play in Mizuno. Step up to Mizuno for serious performance. Tonight's Fox 5 feature photo brought to you by Mizuno. Our Fox 5 featured photo captures a graceful creature out of his element. This 110-pound mountain lion was released in the Downeyville, California wilderness after making an unwelcome visit to a suburban Sacramento neighborhood. When neighbors spotted the big cat and some shrubs, game wardens were called in. They sedated the feline and adorned him with a radio transmission device, a souvenir of his trip to the city. And then he was brought back to a place where he can once again be king of his jungle. Pretty animal, huh? Yeah, it's beautiful. Carla Moore is here now. Yep. Some fun times coming up in yep. the NCAA March for Georgia. March Madness is yeah. getting heavy and hot this weekend. The time is set. The teams are set. So Georgia will begin their trip to the big dance Friday afternoon in Charlotte. Here's how it looks. Southeast regional matchup in Charlotte. First round Friday and game time is what's new today. 1230 Georgia versus UTC. Here's Gigi Smith on the game. I mean, it's just so exciting. I mean, just college basketball at its best. I mean, you got 64 teams all going for like one thing, the national title, and I'm just and, like just just to be a part of it. Sometimes is like just incredible. But um, like I said, we're not trying to go there just to get back to this week's team. We want to go all the way to Indianapolis. We, we want to play six games, but right now we're just worrying about like Tennessee Chatt Chattanooga. All right, he's driven. The Georgia Lady Bulldogs have had 13 invitations to the NCAA tournament, but two things stick out. They haven't won a national title, and they have never been in an East Regional. Georgia is the number two seed in the West. Their journey to the Final Four starts in Athens on Friday. Here's how their matchup looks like. The game is going to start approximately at 8.30. It's uh, 30 minutes after a 6 o'clock game. Georgia versus Eastern Kentucky again in Athens. Here's Andy Lamb on the game. We're, we're excited, obviously, to be back in the tournament and, and pleased that we were able to earn a number two seed. Uh, Eastern Kentucky's a, a basketball team that I don't know a great deal about at this point, but we'll go to school on them. I know that they won the Ohio Valley Conference Championship, uh, played very well coming down the stretch, and I'm sure will be a challenge for us. All right, good luck to the Lady Dogs. Denny Nago has seen better days. He was hammered early today as the Orioles beat the Braves 8-5 to five in Fort Lauderdale. Nagel gave up five runs and seven hits. This one to Cal Ripken. Ripken scores Mike Bordick. Then in the bottom of the second, Eric Davis doubles in Rafael Palmero. The O's took a 5-1 to one lead. They took over from there. Top of the fourth, though, O's pitcher Scott Kamenicki serves up a homer to Randall Simon, but the O's too much for the Braves today. Final again, 8-5, to five, Orioles. And since we're talking about the Braves, how about an overview of Turner Field? Field manager Ed Mangum and crew will lay down the new Greg Norman grass beginning on Wednesday morning. Braves will open the new facility against the world champion Yankees on March 29th and 30th. Season opener is April 4th against the Chicago Cubs. The Florida Marlins are back in the win column, beating Minnesota 6-5 to today. Jim Leland's team is 12-1 in Grapefruit League play as they are strong in Melbourne right after Gary Sheffield hit a two-run single. Bobby Bonilla followed with a three-run homer. Watch this thing fly about 400 feet, leading the Marlins past the Twins 
6 to 5. In Plant City, Florida, life is rough. The Reds and the Mets, fourth inning. Matt Franco homered to put the Mets up 5 to 3. This one goes out right field. Then Deion Sanders was around today. He's on the defensive. Watch this catch. He makes a nice running catch. Actually, looks like he almost trips on the turf, and he was okay after that. The Reds slide by the Mets, 6 to 5. Boxing's heavyweight division may be short on talent, but it's a long on personality. You've got Iron Mike Tyson, Evander, the real deal, Holyfield, and George, I'll fight forever, Foreman. Big George Foreman will step into the ring again to fight the undefeated Lou Savarisi for the WBU heavyweight championship. Here's George on the fight. Henry's worried about those holes that I'm digging. I always measure those things about the distance of a human being. <laughs> With all the company you got over there, you got no Paul bearers. <laughs> you know, George has had a lot of opportunities, and obviously, you know, he's made a, he's made great of those opportunities. And this is my opportunity now, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, Big George, by the way, is 50. His last big fight was against Axel Schultz, and that was, if we all remember, back in April of 1995. Now, tennis great Roscoe Tanner to wrap this thing up tonight, surrendered to New Jersey officials today. Tanner, who lives in Rising Fawn, Georgia, allegedly owes... Listen to this, 50 grand in child support. Wow. Ooh. Yikes. That's deadbeat dad He's going to have to right play there. a lot more tennis. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> well. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Nancy's back. We have a little more good weather before things start to change. Yeah, right? I think we have another couple of days, and I think you're really going to like your forecast. Probably waking up to some bright sunshine tomorrow morning. Temperatures near 50. Good chance we'll be into the low 50s, so kind of a mild start and even a milder finish once again. Highs of 70 to 75 degrees, a good deal of sunshine. It'll be a little bit breezier tomorrow. Good kite flying weather. Northwest winds at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then you'll notice Wednesday still looking great, right around 70. More clouds on Thursday, 69. And then stormy for Friday, 74 is our high. And then cooler on Saturday, and even cooler than that, it looks like, for Sunday as of right now. You know, it's my fault. I asked for Friday off. That's why those... Storm Those systems storms. are moving. I'll see what I can do. I have a couple days to change Thank that. you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. It is not too soon to start thinking about the morning commute. Here are a couple of spots you might want to avoid. In Cobb County, North Booth Road will be closed between Bells Ferry and I-575. Also in Cobb County, South Hurt Road will be closed for road work from Russell Elementary to the relocated Covered Bridge Road. And for the latest road conditions, tune in tomorrow morning to Good Day Atlanta at 6 a.m. Here's a look at tomorrow's headlines tonight. One of the two men charged with stealing a tractor trailer in South Carolina and driving to Georgia will face a judge tomorrow. Officers shot out the truck's tires to end that pair's ride. Also tomorrow, America's top money handler will be in Georgia to talk about a new look for the $2 bill. Thomas Jefferson will grace more than $150 million worth of those bills. And you will have your chance to hear about a proposal to rename part of Capitol Avenue in honor of brave slugger Hank Aaron. That is the news for now. Thanks for making Fox 5 Eyewitness News Primetime your choice for news. For the news team, I'm Russ Spencer. MASH is next. Good night. Fox 5 Eyewitness News was brought to you by Sprint Business. Thousands of businesses turn to us to help them do more business. By BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And by First Union. Closed captioning of this newscast is brought to you in part by U.S. Healthcare. Fox 5 Eyewitness News at 10 can be seen in its entirety at 11 p.m. on Media One News, Channel 33. If you see news happening, call the Fox 5 Eyewitness Newsroom. Just dial star 5 on your Bell South Mobility cell phone. The call is free. You can be a part of Fox 5 Eyewitness News. next extra remember that band of armed texas renegades well now there's a new sheriff in town and he's telling them to put down their guns or else it's extra exclusive coverage of a real life lone star showdown then a little boy lost for days kept alive in sub-zero weather by dogs now some say the boy's mother faked the incident for profit you decide if it was a miracle or hoax the stories only on extra tomorrow at 7:30 on fox 5 atlanta